All right. Hey everyone, Simon here. Welcome back to our ArcMind 100 series where we are learning about architectural concepts through Minecraft. So we're about to start on our ninth exercise and I was just actually walking around the city that I've built so far. And, uh, you know, it hasn't taken that much time, but uh, it seems like we've come a long way, haven't we? Pretty proud of the city that I've built so far. Anyway, let's move on to the ninth exercise, and we're moving on to the final, final stuff now. So there's going to be a transitional space, and then a monument. And the monument basically is like your final exam. What we need to do here is actually to get both exercise 9 and exercise 10, and look at both of them at the same time, because they're kind of linked together. You can't do one without the other. So let me get both books. And you really should get both books, because it's, it really should be one project. Let me just... Well, let me read this here, and then I'll put it back. Actually, should I pick it up? I'll put it back later on. Let me just read number 9. So exercise 9 is transition. Your task is to design and build a transition between the town and your monument. See exercise 10. Aim to make the journey dramatic and interesting. But the purpose is to learn about storytelling through the built environment or how ideas and emotions may be communicated through architecture. Note, you may want to design this at the same time as the monument. In fact, I highly recommend you design this at the same time as the monument. Uh, feel free to change the layout of the path or even move the monument site if you think it will be better. You should aim to build drama, tension, and antip anticipation. Use all the tools you have learned. Scale, color, light, etc. As always, consider what a person will see as they walk through, especially how much of your monument they will see in the distance. So that's number nine. So this is the kind of the space I've given you. There's a gravel path there. So the task is to tra transition from the city to the monument. Uh, the monument site is there, but as I said, you can actually move it if you want. I don't know where you would move it, though. Anywhere else you'd like, really. So, Number 10, so the next exercise, and we need to read this at the same time. When, uh, exercise 10 is the monument. Your task is to build something big and detailed. <laughs> Anything of your choosing. But don't make it too big unless you really want to spend a lot of time on it. Remember, good design and attention to detail is more important than... Than size. We're missing a word here, that's weird. The, the, that's supposed to be more important than um, size. Uh, the purpose is to consider this your final exam. Notes, you can build whatever you like. This makes it harder, not easier. Have confidence, be ambitious, but not over ambitious. And if you're not used to building big things, you'll find out just how much work it takes. If it were easy, it wouldn't be impressive. So, exercise 10 is just build something big. I mean, we don't, I don't give you very much uh, information about that. So let's put number 10 back in the box. And number 9 is going to be a transition. So at the end of the last video, I did say that I intend to build uh, a tower. Probably just a copy of the Eiffel Tower. You don't have to copy any real-life architecture, or you don't really have to... You know, you can build anything you like for the monument. That's really up to you, and that's part of the test. Part of the test is for you to choose what you want to do and to do it properly. But your transition has to work with that. So in order to make this work, first we need to figure out where the tower is going to be, where the Eiffel Tower is going to be built. And then secondly, we have to figure out how to transition from the city to the Eiffel Tower. I'm just going to call it the Eiffel Tower for now, but it might change. The design of it might change later on. So we need to figure out how big it is, where it is, and then what kind of transition I want. I, I think what I want is just to try to frame the tower, maybe raise it on a plinth, frame it, and just make it kind of look more impressive. I guess most areas surrounding monuments are to make the monument itself more impressive. So it's... Uh, it's not too much, so not this like it's not too complex, but I guess it's uh, should be interesting enough. So first of all, we need to figure out where the tower 
or where I want the tile to go. Let me just grab some conspicuous materials like orange wool and then figure out where I want to put this thing. So I can line it up with the city which puts the center line about there, that's where the uh, town square is. Or I can line it up with this road which is a little bit odd because it's, it's a smaller road between two houses. Although I did put this road here. I can line it up with this road and this has the distinct uh, step there. So that's kind of interesting from that perspective, but it, if I put it there, it's kind of off to the side compared to the town square, so that's kind of weird too. Uh, how should I do this? Hmm. And does it matter where I put it? Not too much. It doesn't matter too much. Alright, let's just stick with what we have here. Put it right there. Let me keep it daytime so we can see what we're doing. So let me line it up with this road. So the center of the tower would be along there, right? Second question, how big do I want it and where do I want to put it? I don't want to put it too far back, so you'll notice that you can't see too far into the distance. So I kind of want it to be visible from the town square. So if I put it too far back, then it's not visible anymore. So I think I'll actually have to put it somewhere around here. Alright, let me... I think we're going to have to remove this eventually, if not now. Alright, let me just remove that, put that in my inventory and break all of this. So the center line is here, right? Let me just mark out the center line. So if you're, you know, an architect, you would draw your designs on a piece of paper, but since we're in Minecraft, we're going to draw our designs in the game itself. This is actually not very big, this site, although consider the size of this site that I've given you, with the size of the buildings that we've already uh, uh, worked on. So changing all the dirt into colored clay on these two buildings took us about three and a half hours, I think it was. So just think about that and that scale, and the scale of your monument. So if, if that's three and a half hours, if you want to do a similar thing, then it's going to take you a similar amount of time, but that's not even counting the designing. So that was only color, now you have to design the shape of it as well. So just consider the size of things, and how much time it's going to take to uh, build. Let me count how many blocks I've given myself here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 20, 30, so that's about 30 blocks there, roughly. Do I want to make it 30 by 30? It's not very tall. If I make it 30 by 30, it's not that big. I can make it bigger. 40? 40 by 40 squared. If that's the base of the Eiffel Tower, then it might go twice as tall as that. 80 blocks up. That would make it rather large. I just want to think about how I want to do this. Also, I think what I think the uh, the sensible thing to do would be to raise the thing on a plinth so that the bottom of it is actually above the surrounding ground by a substantial amount. So maybe it'll be Probably higher up than that. Probably the base of it would be like there. So even even the foundations is above the ground. Maybe a little bit lower. A little bit lower like that. Hmm. The foundations of it is going to be above the ground. And we need to widen this. Probably have to demolish this hill a little bit. I'm just thinking in my head about how this might be. 40 by 40? Or it'll be something like 39 or 41, because it's going to be an odd number, because there's a single block in the middle. So it's going to be an odd number. 41 by 41. Is that too big? Let me just 
try 41 by 41, see how big that actually is. So if I go, and should I make this the center? If I make this the center and the base of it is that big, then the transition transition area is not going to be all that big. All right, let me just see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's twenty on that side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 41 is that big. And if you imagine the Eiffel Tower, it will do a crazy thing like that, right? Maybe a bit, maybe a little taller. So that's going to be massive. All right, let's, let's go with that. <laughs> I think that's massive enough. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And if you're wondering about why I kind of just dug all the dirt out and left you with a pit in the ground for your foundations, this is not a proper foundation for any kind of building. What I've done here is I've forced you to not build on the grass. Because what some people do when they kind of build a building is just to kind of just put it on the ground. But that's not how real architecture works. Real architecture always has a foundation. It always has a foundation. So if you look at all the exercises I've given you so far, I've always given you a foundation to put the exercise on top of, except for the park. So the, the thing here is that I'm forcing you to make a foundation so that you don't just put it on the grass. If you just put it on the stone, then it's going to look ugly. And so I'm just going to warn you that now before you start building a monument just you know in a stone pit build a foundation that's important one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten i think i lost count there hold on one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah ten four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, really? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, really. All right. Let me just double check all my counting. If you get it wrong now and then you don't check it, then everything's going to be wrong later on and that's going to be real bad for you. Wow, it's all wrong. Two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Wow. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if it's one block off and you've pretty much finished the whole thing already and then you find out, you might have to rebuild everything. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? So make sure you double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And of course with a square thing like this, the, the easy way to check is to just finish the square and then look across the diagonal. And if the diagonals line up, then you are doing it right. So that's not too difficult to, uh, to figure out. Just put this grid in for reference. And of course the grid should line up when we're done. Also the great thing about the Eiffel Tower is that it's square. <laughs> and since everything in Minecraft is square, it's going to be relatively easy to deal with in terms of trying to figure out the architecture using these blocks. If you choose like a curvy thing like, I don't know, the uh, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and that's circular, right? So they have to figure out circles. And it's leaning, so it's diagonal too, so it's a diagonal set of circles. That's going to be really complicated if you try and do that in Minecraft. So maybe think about that. If you want to make things easy for yourself, like choose something that's square to build. 
up to you, of course. I mean, if you're up to the challenge, then go ahead and do diagonal curving things. It'll be impressive. So you see how the diagonals line up. So that means that, you know, that the numbers are correct. If you're making a square, that is. Only if you're making a square. In fact, I might want to put torches on these things too, just so we can see it at night. Alright, we're almost there. So this orange grid, if you're not following, this is going to be basically the bottom of the Eiffel Tower. So everything underneath this will be the, the foundation and the base of the Eiffel Tower that I'm going to build. And I'm marking this in here because, you know, then I know how, like, what I need to build up to, right? So I'm thinking mostly like a, a stone or some sort of stone foundation, maybe with a bit of a park, a bit of like a, a bit of landscaping, maybe with a bit of water, a bit of a few trees, maybe a lot of water, and then the path going, you know, up, maybe up and over the water or something, like, you know, surrounded by water and plants and all that. So if that's going to be the base of the tower... Oh, maybe I made this too big. Because if that's going to be the base of the tower, the foundations and the surrounding park is going to be even bigger than that. I don't know if that's a good idea. Oh, well, too late. Too late, we are doing it, and we're going to... Well, actually, no, you might not see me do it, most of it. One thing I can do, of course, is to do a lot of the uh, the grunt work off camera, so you don't have to watch me spend hours and hours and hours trying to, you know, fill in all the stone underneath the foundations. If I do that, I'll try to remember how long it took me and tell you how long it took me, because up to now I've basically done these exercises in real time for the videos, and so you can see exactly how long it took me to make these things which hopefully is kind of useful for you guys. And if I do things off camera, which I might, because I plan to build like an artificial mountain underneath here, and to fill all of this in underneath with stone or something. Okay, so let's design something. What's the plan? What is the plan? Do I want to flatten the surrounding land as well? I kind of do. I kind of do want to flatten the surrounding land as well. Maybe something like a pyramid. So I'll need... Alright, let's... How about we have... 10 blocks of flat space and then pyramid down. And that's going to be the basic shape of it. Ten blocks of flat space and then pyramid down. Uh, is it going to be stone? I guess I can put the stone in now and then figure out what I'm going to use afterwards. Um, Alright, stone first and then I might change the materials afterwards. Not sure. Anyway, alright, 10 blocks and then pyramid down. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then pyramid down will be uh, hold on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So let's just double check the corners line up. Yep, the diagonals line up, that's correct. 
So from this point, we go pyramid down to whatever it is the surrounding area is. It is, I mean, there is the option of just leaving the under part of this hollow. And some people, when they design stuff in Minecraft, they just leave the bottom of their things hollow. I tend not to do that because I'm, you know, I'm, I study architecture. And if you, you can't do that in a real building, maybe you can do it in a real building. It just feels cheap and hollow. <laughs> like, it feels like you didn't actually bother to do things properly. Uh, I might do that. At least, you know, if I fill it in, I won't fill it in my... Like, I won't fill it in on video, I'll do it in my own time, if I do. Probably can't see anything, can you? Let me just drop that there. And then, fill that in, like that. Right, right. So imagine a massive, kind of a truncated pyramid underneath here. Hmm. And then what? Oh, well, let me just do this first. It's not like we... We have the luxury of kind of thinking ahead too much. Let me put all this in. So, yeah, as you've noticed, maybe in some of my other designs, I'm putting it in the stone first, so I'm going with the shape first. And then after I figure out the shape, then I'm going to put in the colors. I've said this before that I usually do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've said before that this is the that's the typical strategy that I I use when designing architecture. And I've pointed out that that's not the only way to do it. You can you know uh, prioritize color more than I do instead of pri prioritizing shapes, which is what I do. So, you know, you have that option. If you're a different kind of designer, you don't really have to do things this way. I do things this way just because I think in shapes more than I think in colors or anything else. So this helps me do it, but it's not the only way to do architecture. Alright, so let's... Come on. Let's fill all this in. I guess, yeah, I'll keep the, I'll keep the whole thing hollow underneath, at least for now. Because just, just kind of doing the outline of this massive truncated pyramid is already going to take a long, long time. And you can already see that I'm making this much, much bigger than the foundations that I set for myself originally. And I, I might not recommend this for most people because it's going to take a long time to build. So just be aware as you as you design your architecture. If you're too ambitious, you might start like a a, a week long project for yourself. And a lot of people, well, not a lot of people. I guess less experienced designers sometimes experience that is that they start something big and then they don't really have the motivation to finish. It's not uncommon for people to, to do that, to feel that. But hopefully as you get more and more experience with designing, you start getting used to just how much time it takes to design things. Well, first of all, you, you get better at estimating how long something's going to take. And then secondly, you get used to bigger projects too. I mean, in the real world, most architecture projects take several years. 
some architecture projects takes hundreds of years. And especially the big ones, the impressive ones, can take a long time, can take decades to build. So, you know, if you want to do something amazing and incredible, then you have to acknowledge that it might take a very long time to do that these things are not something that you just do overnight, because if they are, then anyone can do it. The ability to manage long, large projects is a part of the, the challenge of a designer. And you know, having the, the discipline to finish what you start at the very least is something you can practice in Minecraft. Start a big project and then finish it. Although, as I said, you know, part of the skill is also not to start projects that are too big for yourself. But that's a, that's a different issue. So, this is going to take a long time. Uh, and it's not going to be too interesting, either, because we're actually just building a very simple shape here. Do. Let me just continue. In fact, I might want to start from the bottom instead of starting from the top. Did I miss a? Yeah, I didn't miss a block. All right. So here, there's going to be a block down here. And um, that should be fine. I probably want to do this so I can place the next block on top of this. And um, here. And uh, here, how does this go? Let me just do this bit so I can see where it ends, at least for now. I'm going to bury this a little bit into the ground as well. I guess that means that this should be in the ground as well. So we're making the, the pyramid continuous in the ground. Or at least, you know, appear continuous in the ground. So that it doesn't stop at the ground, it's like it's buried into the ground. I don't know if you can kind of notice that difference, whether it's you know sitting on the ground or buried into the ground. It means you have to you know, also make this stone because if it's buried into the ground, then it would be like that and not the other way around. Uh, not explaining it very well, am I? Hopefully, you can just see what it is that I mean. Alright, what's going on? So there's that, and also here. Actually, it also means that this. Oh no, it doesn't, my bad. My bad, my bad. It doesn't mean that at all. It means I just continue putting this on top. Flowers? in the way, alright, let's put that there. What can we... I mean, right now it's a giant stone pyramid. How should we decorate this? I was thinking having, like, water flowing down the sides in some way. 
But I was also thinking a slightly more complicated uh, slope than just a straight pyramid like this too. So I might actually complicate it a little bit later on. But um, just thinking, how do we make this interesting? Water cascading down the side, yeah. But maybe having like a series of channels that divert the water back and forth as it flows downwards, so it's not just coming straight down, but it kind of goes sideways a little bit, back and forth maybe. Um, it would be nice, I think, to have a... Uh, some cascading water. Oh, that horse just went inside. Well, you're gonna be in there for the rest of all time unless you walk out the other side because once this closes, it closes. That pig too, none of you guys are getting out ever again once this closes. Ah, can't get out anymore. Should have stayed out when you had the chance. Alright, we're almost done with one side. And there's three more sides to go. Although this is, I think, the, the bigger side. As the ground slopes up on the other side of this thing, it's going to be less work because it's going to be you know, a smaller distance between the top and the bottom of it. You know, over there. What does that look like? Well, it looks like the base of a pyramid, basically. <laughs> it's the base of a massive pyramid. I mean, just the base of the pyramid itself puts it almost above the houses. Alright, let's continue. And I guess I should do the, the stuff up top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It lines up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So hopefully that counts as double checking that it's ten blocks. Now, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yep. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, good. And this is actually on the ground. I don't know how I feel about this. Well, like what I can do is like cut this mountain back to have the the pyramid seem a little bit taller. Or alternatively, I can just leave it like this and not worry about it too much. Not sure. I might cut it back a little bit actually because I want. I said I want a little bit of cascading water, right? Cascading water means that I would have to catch the water back at some point. Yeah, as it falls down, you don't just kind of have it flow over the ground, that's a bit weird. So it might kind of flow halfway down and then they'll, they'll be caught. Which means that if I want to flow it halfway down, then I'll have to make it the same height on the other side as well. Before catching the water back. I'll think about what I want to do later on. Well, I can just keep the water on top. I can just keep the water like... Uh, what am I doing? No, don't do that. I can keep the water up here. Won't be as interesting though, would it? No. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right, and then we just join this back. And then we fill in everything in between. When you start an ambitious project, you have to finish it. That's the problem with monuments. And this is basically the lesson. If you learn one thing out of this exercise, is that big things take time. Seems like a really... Um, really over-the-top way to teach that lesson, but until you try it, you don't understand what it means to build something big. Building something big is not the same as building something small. It's not just, you know, doing a small house except it's ten times as big. Doing something big is fundamentally different from doing something small. And until you do it, you don't understand what it means. Hmm. Alright, let me just continue this. So you mean as as you kind of see me do this, or you know, imagine other people building big things. You can imagine what it was like for people to build the pyramids, for example, or build the Great Wall, or other large things. Oh, we haven't done the monuments lecture yet. We're still doing the transitions lecture. So this is so we're basically building the monument right now because I mean this is like the base, the foundation of the of the Eiffel Tower is going to be integral to the Eiffel Tower itself. So really, as I said, like exercise 9 and exercise 10 are basically the same exercise. But I, I, I guess I put it in, in two exercises. One, I'm giving you, you know, two weeks to do it. You know, twice as much time as all the other exercises. And secondly, I just want to, I just really, really, really want to make sure people don't just build something impressive on the ground and then don't don't do the surrounding foundations or whatever it is. Because you'll be surprised how, how often people do that in Minecraft. Like people who don't actually build houses for a living, playing a video game like Minecraft. You'll be surprised how often you find like these impressive castles or these kind of giant towers just sitting on the dirt with no foundations. Which makes no sense. That it's literally just sitting on the dirt. And so and that's that's not how buildings work. So, you know, when I when I say kind of do the transition and then do the tower, or, or whatever it is your monument wants to be, what I'm kind of forcing you to do is to consider the area surrounding the monument as well. So it's not just the monument itself, but also the the space around it. And hopefully that will encourage people to actually do proper foundations and proper landscaping around their monuments. It makes so much difference. Like when you walk up to a thing and it's just kind of dirt or grass, and then there's a castle sitting on the grass. It's, it's, it's weird. That is so weird. Build some foundations. So here we are, we're building foundations out of stone, a massive one. And it's going to be so important to the tower itself because it, it sets it up. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's the plinth, it's the basis. It's the foundation. It's the uh, it's the thing that holds up the most important thing in your in your city. You know, like like roads, I guess. It's also amazing how often people don't build roads in their Minecraft cities. But again, roads are. You know, roads finish your city. If your city doesn't have roads, it's weird. Roads are boring, just like foundations are kind of boring. 
but if you don't have them, then, then your city isn't right. So... Imagine people building the pyramids. It's the massive pile of sandstone. Just move all that stone to build a giant artificial mountain in the desert. Why on earth would you do that? <laughs> I mean, I know why. I mean, they believed in the afterlife. They believe in immortality, like that's why they mummified their kings and, and all that, the Egyptians. I mean, well, sad day for them, it, it's not true. Just because you mummify your body doesn't mean you live forever. But they would, you know, they went to such extraordinary lengths to build massive pyramids for dead people. Well, I guess good on them, because otherwise we won't have anything to study, right? Archaeologists and, you know, architects. If they didn't build these massive stone mountains for no good reason, then we wouldn't have anything to look at in our picture books. So good on them for building this stuff. Still. Seems like a lot of work, doesn't it? Building a giant pyramid. Maybe I should stop talking about monumentality, because that's the next lecture. And start talking more about theatricality, because that's what that was the last lecture. So if you want to talk about theatrics, what are we doing is we're basically building the stage for the monument, if you want to think of it that way. Like, this is the stage that presents the monument to people. And of course the stage, as we said, is important for setting the scene, for, you know, allowing people to understand or see what what it is that you're trying to present to them. Just like if you just have a if you put a trophy on the ground, it's not really a trophy. Well, I mean it is, but it's like well, why did you put it on the ground? You need a plinth or something, right? You need to put it on the on the, in the cabinet or put it on on display. You know, like in the Olympics, when when people win an award, you don't just hand them a medal on the ground. Like you, you put them, you literally put the athletes the winning athletes onto a plinth and then you hand them a medal and the higher up they are on the plinth the better they did like why on earth did you do, you do that? as like what they okay they, the guy did a race the guy won you give him a medal but it's not only that you put him on a podium you like you, you literally raise him up off the ground and then give them a give them a medal right so that that's interesting too. Like he, I mean, there's only three steps to you know to, to the uh, gold medal position. Like you kind of walk up three steps, and that symbolizes your victory. That symbolizes that you are the best in the world, right? Which is kind of slightly weird, but also makes a lot of sense if you you know if you kind of just follow the the logic. Yeah, the the guy won, so he's higher up than the others. So the higher up you are, the more important you are. I'm not sure that logic really follows, but that's how the that's how it is. You know, the higher up you are, the more important you are. Oops, what we're doing. So this is what we're doing now. We're putting we're going to put the monument on top of this raised plinth. Because we're saying this is important. This thing right here, this is important. And that's it. That, that's what we're doing. And this is the whole point of all this work I'm putting in right now, is to, is to do that. Of course we're going to decorate it too, so it's kind of nice and interesting to, to walk around in. And it does make a difference. Like, the how you build a plinth does make a difference. I mean, you can imagine... If it's full of trees, it'll be different than if it's like a large pond of water, and that'll be different if it's just kind of a block of stone. How you build it, how you design it, the details you put on it make a difference. 
And interestingly, like if you make the plinth too interesting, if you make it kind of a, you know, too decorative, you run the risk of making it more interesting than the monument itself. So you don't want to do that neither, because then, then people are like more impressed by your by your plinth than your monument. So we want to make it interesting, but not too interesting. Not more interesting than the monument. So maybe that 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 means that I really should keep in mind to keep this uh, relatively simple and not try to do too many fancy things here. Uh, right. What other things can we say about plinths or foundations? Most people, hmm, most people, most of the time, did that horse just get stuck on the block? Well, that horse is gonna die. It glitched his way into the block. What is even happening there? So, if you think about you and your experience of your city, what is this horse doing? If you think about your experience of the city, most of the buildings you walk past, you don't go into, right? Or you know, most of the buildings you travel past, you don't go into. How many buildings do you go into? Like, you, you, there's your home, maybe there's your school or your office, Maybe there's a few shops that you buy things from. But the vast majority of the buildings in your city, you don't go into. And you've never been into. And so your experience of them is not what's on the inside, but what's on the outside. So the plinths and the foundations and the landscaping and the surrounding area, those are the parts of buildings that people spend most of their time experiencing. Whereas the interior, I mean obviously the interior is also important, but only a small number of people or a small proportion of the people will actually go inside the building and, and live there or work there or whatever it is. So if you really think about it, you know, having a good landscaping around your building actually benefits far more people than having a good interior, if you think about it that way. Although, you know, obviously having a good interior is also important and it benefits the people who actually live there or work there in, in more important ways than the landscaping outside, but you reach more people with the landscaping, is what I'm trying to say. Just as, you know, more people experience roads, or, you know, people spend more time experiencing roads than they do interiors. And if you think about a city, if you think about visiting a city, for example, what you're literally doing is walking along the roads. That's your experience of it. Or even if you go look at landmarks and monuments, like if you go visit, I don't know, what's a, what's a good landmark? If you go visit the Grand Canyon or something, isn't there that... That's, viewing platform that sticks out into the Grand Canyon or whatever it is you know you drive there on the roads and then you go to a viewing platform to see the things that you think well you know what's important here is is the Grand Canyon look at me I'm at the Grand Canyon post a selfie on Instagram or something but then you know what what enables that what allows you to take that selfie is that platform, you, that viewing platform, and the roads that got you there, right? So those things are important, even though nobody says, hey, look at this great viewing platform at the Grand Canyon, let me take a selfie with the platform. No, everybody takes a selfie with the canyon itself. So it's one of those things that get, gets left out of the narrative, that gets left out of people's stories. It's like, what did you do today? I went to the Grand Canyon. Nobody says, I went to the viewing platform at the Grand Canyon. But just because people, you know, forget 
these things, it doesn't mean they're not important. In fact, they're very important. Having a good viewing platform is is important. Otherwise, how are you going to take that selfie? So there's a lot of things that people, I guess, take for granted or just don't really notice that are actually critical to their experience of the world around them. Alright, you're going to have to move a little bit and get buried underneath this foundation. Maybe I should do that. Just go to famous places and then instead of taking photos of the famous places, take photos of like the seats. <laughs> take photos of the toilets. Because imagine if you're like at the Grand Canyon, but you need to go to the bathroom and there's no toilets. That would be terrible. That would ruin your experience of the Grand Canyon, right? <laughs> Nobody thanks the toilets. Nobody takes a selfie with the toilet. I don't know, just rambling. Okay, so we're gonna continue the diagonals. Wow, it's a massive platform, look at that. Alright, continue diagonals. I am quite concerned about the other side. There's not really enough space on the other side to have cascading water. I guess I have to do some landscaping. I don't want to make it too tall though, because it's already quite tall, especially if you walk from the city up to the Eiffel Tower. Then you really have to climb, like you have to kind of go from this level where we are now up to this level where the thing is going to be, so it's already going to be quite a uh, quite a climb. I haven't really decided how to climb this yet. I think we need a fancy staircase. I think we need a fancy staircase. Remember the unnecess unnecessarily complex staircase back in the park? I might do a similar strategy of having people kind of go around and around and around so they can kind of get, you see, like as you walk towards the tower, you see different angles of it. I think I might do that again. Here. Just to make it so that people just don't just kind of walk straight up to the tower, because if you do that, then you just get one view. Imagine there's like a tower there. It's a massive tower in front of you, and if you just kind of walk straight up the middle, then your view of the tower doesn't change. Like it's just you, you, you see it from the distance, and you walk up to it, and it's just the same tower the whole time. So it gets boring, right? If you just kind of walk straight up to it. So I think the idea is to make people kind of go, you know, turn around, turn side to side, kind of see it from different angles. Maybe I should make them even walk all the way around. Would that be too much? That would be too much. I'll think about it. And I uh, also have to consider how much space we have. We might not actually have enough space to do anything too fancy. I'll we'll probably just have a ramp that goes around a little bit. Maybe that has to come afterwards. See, I, I keep talking about having to, to design the tower or the monument and the landscape or the, uh, the transition at the same time. That's because like you, you don't really know. like. They need to complement each other, but if you design the stair for example, I'm talking about the staircase, making people see the 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 monument from different angles. But if I don't know what the monument actually looks like, how do I know which angle I want people to see it from? So I kinda need to have the tower there as I design the uh, the staircase to go up to it because otherwise it might not work. So what I might do is I'll finish the uh, this basic foundation, and then I might actually plan out the tower in the next video, and then come back and, and work on the foundation again, so that you know, kind of working back and forth between the two things, instead of actually doing the two exercises separately. Oh, I don't really want that there. 
I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it, and then it'll probably make more sense once I do it, as to what I mean. But you know, as I, as I'm kind of building this, like how tall is is this tower gonna be? We don't know. That we we don't know how tall it's gonna be at the moment. So I need to figure out how tall it is, so that if I design the staircase so that you see it from an angle, and you want to see it like maybe you want I want you to see it from this angle, but I want to see the whole thing. Then the the steepness and the angle of the staircase needs to kind of line up with the height of the tower. Otherwise, you won't see it. So in order to make sure that you see it from the angle that I'm going to set up, I need to know how big this tower is going to be before I can do that. Does that make sense? Hopefully hopefully it does. So, um, yeah, so the next video might be me playing in, planning out the tower. I might actually need to get... I guess the, the thing to do is just to get a picture of the Eiffel Tower, figure out the proportions, and then, you know, Work out the height, given that the the base of it is gonna be 41 blocks wide, and then just probably figure out the height in the middle, and then that'll be it. Actually, it won't be that much work. Just figure out the height of it. I might even be able to do it in this video before we finish. Maybe not. We still got th three sides of this diagonal stuff to go through. I really want to fill in the inside, but it's going to take so much time to do, to fill in everything. Unless maybe I use lava. If you don't know, if you pour water on lava, it turns into obsidian or cobblestone, depending on lava sources or lava flows. Maybe I use lava to fill this in. That might be fast. Never mind that though, that's a different thing, you don't have to worry about that. If I do it, I'll do it in my own time, because it doesn't really matter to you, only to me. Alright, two more sides, come on. And it's pretty dark. is going to have to go all the way across. How many... actually... How many monuments have you guys personally visited? Kind of an awkward question. I guess you can't answer it here. Maybe you can leave something in the comments if you're interested. I was wondering... You know, have you been to... Where have I been to? I've been to the Great Wall, right? I've been to... Rome and Venice... and Florence, so I've seen those. I haven't actually been to that many places in the world. I'm not much of a traveler. And I haven't really been to see monuments for myself in real life all that much. Maybe I should. Maybe I should just travel a little bit more. What do I really want to see? I don't really want to see anything. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean that. To, I, don't, I don't mean that to say I don't want to see anything. I just mean... I don't have a real burning desire to travel, is what I mean. Some people do, some people really enjoy traveling. For me, it's more like a hassle having to pack. <laughs> having to pack my stuff in the suitcase. Like, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, again, like, I, there's no place that I really, really, really want to see. Which is odd, like, you think that somebody like me would be a little, at least a little bit curious about seeing things in real life.
Maybe Japan. Not for any monuments, but for cities. I kind of want to see the Tokyo slash Osaka metropolitan area. You know, if you don't know, Japan is basically like it's got these massive, massive urban areas, just kind of continuous urban areas stretching across the country. What are you, what are you doing? Get out of here. Get out of here. Massive urban areas stretching across the city because there's so many people and there's not much space. So there's these high, really high density urban conglomerations, which are kind of awesome. I can't really think of that many places I want to go to. Japan, where else? No, no, that's pretty much it. <laughs> it seems so unimaginative and so unambitious, right? But I've, um,. I always felt like you could just see things in picture books and computer games. It's not the same, of course. I know it's not. I know it's not the same, but maybe I would actually prefer to play more video games than to go visit someplace real. I mean, first of all, you don't have to pack your suitcase <laughs> if you're playing video games, so that's convenient. Alright, how am I doing this? Across to there... And then this just touches the ground right here. Um, alright, let me just put these blocks in. This grass is really annoying. Look at that, look at that, I wanna... Let me place these blocks, stupid grass. Alright, let's seal this up. I'm definitely gonna have to do something about this, this is way too close to the ground. Or maybe... I don't know, but what would I do? What would I do and why would I do it? I want cascading water. I know I want cascading water. Um... No, it's a bit weird. How far down would I go? I have to figure that out later. Pig, you are going the wrong way. You don't want to be in there. And you, you, can you like not be there, pig? Never mind. Stupid pig. Hey, hey, st stop getting in the way of my architecture. St no, what a. Alright. Where's my. Where's my. Carrots? Do they follow carrots? What do they follow? Oh, hey, good of you to come out of there. Alright, so there's that. And then I need to make this also stone. And then I need to make this also stone. Alright, we're almost there. One more side to go. And uh, we do that. And then all the way across. There is a hole down here. What is this? Just a cave? Or just, there's a cave down there, if you're interested. We are just gonna cover it up and pretend it's not even there. Oh, has all the animals left, or are they still in here? I can't see a thing down here. Somehow, I think the animals... Nope, nope, there's still a couple of horses down here. 
I feel like most of the horses actually were smart enough to leave, or maybe they just suffocated. You probably can't see anything because it's too black in here. Alright, let's go outside. So we're gonna pretend that none of this stuff is here underneath this particular thing. And we're gonna close it up and never speak of it again. And then across here. So you know you can see that when the diagonal reaches the ground there, it's gonna be quite close to the the city already. So that's what I mean when I say you know you might want to move the the foundations of your of your monument further out, so you kind of have more space to work with. Again, I gave you that, and then this path. As you can see, once you start putting in something ambitious into this space, you run out of space very quickly. So maybe as you watch this, you want to keep that in mind and um, adjust your design accordingly. These animals just refuse to get out of the way. Alright, almost there. Except we're not because there's still quite a bit down there. No, no go away, horse. Go away, go away. Then there, like that. Oops. Get rid of that. Yeah, there's not going to be very much room between the city and the monument anymore, is there? It's pretty close. Oops, what are we doing? It is pretty close to the city now. But that's probably okay. That's probably okay. At least we didn't, you know, run out of space completely. We didn't kind of crash into the city as we built this foundation. So I did leave enough space. What am I doing? This is actually one block behind, so I'm just gonna put in the underside of of this slope, and then I'm gonna put the side above on these blocks here. Ah, uh, maybe you should have kept that. Alright, so on top of this, there's gonna be another layer. This should be easier, because I've done all the, all the awkward bits already. Almost there, guys. Almost there. Well, this is what happens when you build big things. It takes a long time, although it's kind of not that dissimilar to building the roads. You know what I mean? It's just a lot of placing blocks. We will get to the interesting stuff in the next video. Once we finish this kind of base, then we can start actually detailing it, which is the interesting part. I don't know if I've said this enough, but detailing is important. The detail makes the architecture. So a giant shape like the pyramids is not... I mean, okay, well, pyramids is architecture, but that's not what defines good architecture, although I guess the pyramids are pretty good. 
but usually you don't just have monolithic shapes or like you know, a massive just kind of pyramid a simple shape usually you have details in your buildings like windows and doors and, and paths and corridors and what are you are you in the way again and you know other stuff like that it's the details that really define your architecture What are you even doing? What are you? Get, don't get out of here. Get out. What do you know? No, no, no dancing on the pyramid. Get, get out. So, yeah, I mean, like, you know, a massive shape like this. You know, anyone can make a massive shape like I'm doing now. It's gonna, there's a detailing is that's gonna make the difference between, you know, your design and somebody else's. So while big things are impressive, the detailing is what really matters. Uh, is that right? Yep, that's right. Look how close it is now. I put the, the foundations over there and then it's already extended all the way close to here. So as you do yours, as you build your monument and your transition, just make sure you to give yourself plenty of space. Again, this is the sort of thing that you have to get used to if you ever design big things. Like if you haven't designed big things before, you might not realize just how much space something takes, for example, and how much space you have to give yourself. So that's something to keep in mind. If you want to build giant buildings in the future, right? Still not done, still gonna do this. So that the pyramid appears to be buried in the ground and not sitting on the ground. Alright, 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 alright. So we got that. Let me just check all four sides. Impressive, but only because it's big, not because there's any real design going on here. <laughs> I haven't actually put any details in. I mean, also, it's going to echo the shape of the uh, of the Eiffel Tower, right? Because the Eiffel Tower also, you know, kind of goes up like that. So the the diagonal sides of the foundation kind of echoes that. So it kind of curves up and then curves up. So everything curves up in the same direction. That's part of the idea as well. Okay, so we've got that done. Before we finish this video, let me just go to Google and type in Eiffel Tower and just try to figure out how wide it is compared to how tall it is. And then we can, you know, do a similar thing. Let's see, do we have dimensions? I'm looking at the Wikipedia article. Design of the tower... Origin artist project. There's like an original design drawing of it, which is pretty cool. Um, hmm. There must be a size. Hold on, what is this? Uh, height. Roof is 300 meters. Does not say how wide it is, although it's 300 meters high. Uh, the game's not even that high. You can't even. Oh, can you go 300 blocks? You can't, right? No, the game like the game's not even that high. So the thing we're building in Minecraft is nowhere near as big as the real thing. The tower is 324 meters. Um, construction no 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 one nobody says how big it is. Nope. Subsequent events 
design of the tower, material, wind considerations, accommodation, passion to the lifts, aesthetic consideration. It doesn't actually say how wide it is. Huh, only how tall it is. Well, I mean, that just shows you the dis discrimination of people against people's width as opposed to their heights. You know, if you're too tall, nobody says you're too tall, but if you're too fat, everybody complains. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, let me see, let me check this original diagram. Well, let me just use my fingers then, if I can't see how tall it is. So, one, two, three. It's about three times as tall as it is wide. Oh boy. So if it's 41 blocks wide, it's going to be 120 blocks tall. It's going to be 120 blocks tall, guys. Well, let's go count 120 blocks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's just double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Actually, we can use F3. So this is 83. Let me just go up to 93. That's much easier. I'm looking at the XYZ coordinates. So I'm looking at that there, 93. That shows you how high we are. And then 103. Hundred and three, then hundred and thirteen, right? So we started at eight, so we needed to be two hundred and three. Is that how tall we needed to, to go? One hundred and twenty-three. It's gonna be massive. <laughs> this thing is gonna be. Massive. 133. I don't... I don't even know what I was thinking. 40 block base? Eiffel Tower? 203 blocks up into the sky? I don't even think we can go that far. Doesn't it stop at 120... No, it doesn't stop at 120. Maybe we can. Doesn't it stop at 196? I don't know, does it stop at 196? Or does it go all the way up to 258? Let me go 163. And then 173. It's, it's, um, I got it right, right? I, it's three times as tall as it is wide. It is 40 blocks wide, therefore it is 120 blocks tall. Yeah. Wow. So now we are 100 blocks up. 183. We started at 83, now we're 183. 100... 110... I might be 10 off, hold on. Let me just go up to 100 or 203. 120? Let's drop that there. This is insane. Are we, are we sure this is how big this thing is gonna be? So we got this right, and then we're down to here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 
80, 90, 100, 110, 120. Okay, I was, I was 10 blocks above. 10 blocks too tall. Let me just cut this back by 10 blocks. It's gonna be that tall? Are we kidding? I can't even see the top because there's clouds in the way. Hold on, let me just turn off the rain and turn off the, the night. Turn on the sun, turn off the night. Uh, toggle down for... Ah, uh, stupid clouds. So we're going to be here. It's going to be that big. <laughs> why did I... Why did I think this was, this was a good idea? This thing's going to be massive. Massive. Um... Why did I think this was a good idea? Okay, well let me uh... Well, it's, 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 it's a good size though. Let me go back to the... To the city square. Just see what happens when we're back here and looking back the other way. Oh, we're gonna see it alright. We are, we are going to see this. And it's gonna be massive. Okay, well, there we go. We are gonna build the Eiffel Tower. It's gonna be 120 meters tall. And uh, we, we, we've barely started. We've blocked in the foundations and we have a long way to go. But that's okay, we have two weeks or something. Alright, I'm gonna end this video here. In the next video, I will continue putting details into the foundation and trying to design a staircase. I guess I'll try to design the staircase first, then figure out how the water goes, because I want cascading water around the, uh, the pyramid base. And then we'll figure out what happens at the top of the uh, of the plinth here where we're standing. All right, let's see you guys.